In this video, I am going to talk about chi-squared goodness of fit test. In my first video, we have learned how to test whether a set of data follows binomial distribution. In my second video, we test Poisson distribution. Now in this video, we are going to learn how to test whether a set of data follows normal distribution. When carry out chi-squared goodness of fit test, generally there are four steps. Step number one, state the hypothesis. And step number two, calculate the test statistic, where chi-squared is equal to the sum of O minus E power 2 divided by E, where O is the observed frequency and E is the expected frequency. When calculate the expected frequency, we are going to use the formula n times p, where n is the sample size and p is the probability of each of the class. Now, since we are going to test normal distribution, so we are going to use the standard normal distribution table to find the probability. Then step number three, determine the critical value and rejection region. Step number four, make decision and conclusion. Now let's proceed to the question. The marks of 100 students of a test in a school is summarized as follows. Perform a chi-squared test to determine whether the marks are normally distributed with mean 173.5 and standard deviation 7 at a 10% level of significance. Now first step, state the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the marks are normally distributed. The alternative hypothesis is the marks are not normally distributed. When testing normal distribution, we must make sure that the intervals are continuous. But in this question, the intervals are not continuous. So in this case, we are going to make use of the midpoint between the lower limit and the upper limit as the boundary such that the intervals are continuous. So therefore, the interval for the first class will be changed to 154.5 up to 160.5 and the second interval will be changed to 160.5 up to 166.5 then we will continue until the last class. Another important when we test the normal distribution since the x is infinity on the left hand side and also on the right hand side, we must consider all the possible outcome before the first class and after the last class. So here we are going to add in the extra class before the first class and one extra class after the last class with the observed frequency equal to zero. Now we are going to calculate the probability of each class. Since we are testing normal distribution, so we are going to use the standard normal distribution table. So therefore, the variable x must be changed to standard normal variable z. So for the first class, when x is less than 154.5, before we can find the probability, we must change x into z by using the value of x154.5 minus the mean 173.5 divided by the standard deviation 7. So, after that, based on the standard normal distribution table, we find that the probability is equal to 0 0.034. 
By using this value of probability, now we can calculate the expected frequency for this class. So we are going to multiply 100 becomes 0 0.3400. Then for the next class, when x is between 154.5 up to 160.5, so same thing, we are going to change x into z by using the x value minus the mean divided by standard deviation. So when we press calculator, Z is in between negative 2.786 up to negative 1.857. So now in order to find the probability of this class interval, now you can refer to my videos that is how to find probability using standard normal distribution to understand how to find the probability using the normal distribution table. So now after referring to the standard normal distribution table, now we find that the probability is 0 0.0283. Now based on this value of probability, now we can calculate the expected frequency of this class. That is 100 times the probability equals 2.83 because n is equal to 100. Now by using the same method, we can calculate the probability of the third class and expected frequency of the third class probability of the fourth class and expected frequency of the fourth class, probability of the fifth class and expected frequency, then probability of the sixth class and the expected frequency, followed by probability of the seventh class with the expected frequency, then finally the probability of the last class and the expected frequency of the last class. Now, after finish calculating, we are going to combine everything in a table so that it is easier to refer. But before this, we must double check is there any value of expected frequency which is less than 5. So notice that the first class and the second class, the expected frequency is less than 5. So we are going to combine these two classes with the following class. Same thing go to the last class where the expected frequency is less than 5. Now we are going to combine this last class with the class before this. So now when we combine the first three class, the class interval becomes x less than 166.5. Then same thing go to the last class. After combine, the class interval becomes x greater than or equal to 184.5. Then for observed frequency, after combine, the first class is 20, the last class is 5. For expected frequency, after combine, the first class becomes 15.87 and the last class becomes 5.81. So now we can calculate the chi-squared value for the first class. O is 20, E is 15.87. When we substitute in the formula, when we calculate, we get 1.0748. For the second class, O is 25, E is 28.45. When substitute into the formula, we get 0 0.4184. Then followed by the third class, when we substitute the O and E, when we calculate, we get 0 0.1167. For the class number 4, O is 20, E is 17.95, then we get 0 0.2341. Then for the last class, O is 5, E is 5.81, we get 0 0.1129. Now we sum all the value. We must make sure that the total of observed frequency and the expected frequency must be the same. Then the total for chi-squared, it is 1.9569.
Now we proceed to the step number three. The significant level alpha is equal to 0 0.10. Then for degree of freedom, V is equal to K minus M minus 1, where K is the number of classes and uh, M is the number of estimate population parameter. For normal distribution, the population parameter is mean and variance. So in this question, after combine, the number of classes is 5 and we don't have any estimate population parameter, then M is 0 minus 1, so the degree of freedom is 4. Then for critical value from the table of chi-squared, we found that the value is 7.779. Then for rejection region, since this is the critical value 7.779 and this is the rejection region, so means H node is rejected if chi-squared is greater than 7.779. Then step number four, make decision and conclusion. Since the chi-squared is equal to 1.9569, which is less than 7.779, so therefore, each node is not rejected. Now we can make conclusion that at 10% significance level, it is insufficient evidence to conclude that the marks are not normally distributed. Therefore, the marks are normally distributed. Now we have come to the end of the lesson. From this lesson, you have learned how to test whether a set of data follows normal distribution by using chi-squared goodness of fit test. If you find that this video is useful, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you keep on learning and keep on watching my videos. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.